Okay, so this is my 8 gig Raspberry Pi 4 and uh, it's running the unofficial firmware, uh, the beta version, which gives it USB boot. Uh, and up until now, you've had to jump through quite a few hoops to boot from USB. And you really see a big performance boost from running the whole operating system from an SSD drive or indeed uh, a really fast USB stick. Uh, but it also means you can run a physical hard drive, so if you wanted to run uh, a big RetroPie system, you can as well. So up until now, you've had to run all the beta software, but uh, today that's changed, and now it's on stable release. So if I try my Raspberry Pi 4, this is the only one that hasn't got the beta software on it. So if I try and boot from that, I'll show you what happens. Okay, so all plugged in the same. Let's just plug the power in and show you what happens. There you go, so failed to boot. So what we need to do is have Raspbian or Raspberry Pi OS running from an SD card. So I've got an SD card with the operating system already on. So let's unplug, unplug the USB, and we'll just have the SD card in here. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over to screen capture now. Okay, so it's thanks to Renee uh, on my comments who told me about this fix. Uh, now I did find, uh, the other day I found uh, this similar fix, but it didn't work the other day uh, and it hadn't been used to stable, even though in the comments it said it had. Uh, but this looks like it definitely has. So if I click on this uh, Raspberry Pi EEPROM uh, and we go to stable, so they promoted that version to stable. So basically that just means when we update the Pi, uh, it will update the EEPROM and that will give us the new stable USB boot. So there's nothing risky, well, there should be nothing risky about this. It is officially been released and you're not having to put things into uh, any different mode to make it work. So let's follow the instructions that he's put uh, and see what happens. Makes it nice and easy. So open the terminal. So you're running Raspberry Pi OS, doesn't matter if it's the beta version or the, uh, the standard version. And then let's copy this in. Hit return. The desktop has been updated. Okay. So then we just type reboot and return. Okay, so that's rebooted, so let's get that comment back up again to follow the rest of the tip. So this next bit is just checking uh, what version of EEPROM your Pi looks for. So if I paste that in, what it's gonna do is it's gonna check what version. So mine says critical in here, uh, it should say stable. So let's change that. And then Control X to exit. Hit yes to save and enter. So that saved that. So now if I run that command again, it says stable. So this is what we want it to stay. So I can close that terminal down, open up another terminal, and then we do sudo rpi update. And again, this is only looking for the stable one, so shouldn't be anything to worry about hit paste and return. It says it's installing uh, the new firmware, 15th of June. So you've got to reboot to apply. Okay, so now we can either use the Raspberry Pi Imager or Belena Etcher to write an image, but this time instead of doing it to an SD card, we do it for an SSD drive or a USB stick. Now, I can't believe I haven't got Raspberry Pi Imager on here, so if you haven't got Imager, you need to go to uh, Preferences, Add Remove Software, and if you type in Imager, there you go. So there's Raspberry Pi Imager. So we'll click on that. We'll click on this one as well, because it also says Raspberry Pi Imager, and hit Apply. Tap in our password, and that's it. That's installed, so hit OK. Uh, if we now go up to here, and under accessories, we've got Imager. So I can click on that. And then this is what you would use to write your OS to say a USB stick. So if I was to put any old USB stick in, 
or an SSD drive. So I've plugged a USB stick in. You choose an OS. Uh, and so in this, Ubuntu doesn't boot from USB at the moment, but it will in the future. And all of these versions of Raspberry Pi OS do as well. So if you were going to install the 32-bit version, choose your device, in this case a USB device, and then just hit right. Now I'm not going to do that bit because uh, it, it just carries on and it does it for you. Uh, because I've already got it on my SSD drive that I started off with, that's what I'm going to show it on. So if you look through my channel, you'll find some useful videos to do with this. And uh, for instance, USB boot fix, uh, because not every uh, SATA to USB cable works with an SSD drive. Uh, I've also done some tests on using a USB adapter to run your SD card on, which you can now do. So you can literally just put your SD card in a USB 3 adapter and boot from that. It may not be faster though, have a look at the test. Uh, the other videos that are worth looking at are this one, which is uh, USB boot SSD SATA cable test, uh, where I used a physical drive and also an SSD drive, but I also used two different types of cable uh, and had various different results with that. Also, I tested it on a USB stick uh, with the USB boot and most USB sticks are slower, but there are some lightning fast ones. And if you check the comments, there are some amazing results that people have got from an ordinary USB stick. Well, not ordinary, like a 50, 60 pound USB stick, but they are some of the fastest results I've seen beating my SSDs, which is amazing. And then last one that's worth looking at, or two actually, uh, this is uh, where you can use a 750 gig hard drive with RetroPie, which will enable you to store a massive RetroPie image and boot straight from USB on a cheap hard disk that cost me 12 pounds. The other one worth looking at is this one. Now you've got this method. Uh, this is a video about what operating systems work, but also in the description, I update it as time goes on. So at the moment with this USB boot, so using this same method with Raspberry Pi Imager, you can run RetroPy, Raspbian, Raspbian X, iRaspbian, uh, Libra Lec, uh, the Monka Pi builds, pretty much any RetroPy build. Uh, and there are also some other operating systems that are working, but you need to do a few extra steps on those. Uh, but it's all in there, so have a look for that bright blue image. That's the one with all the details in there. I'll put a link in the description to everything. But uh, let's restart this, but just now that it's done, I'll shut this down and restart with just my SSD in. Okay, so SSD is plugged in. Remove the SD card and then plug it in. There you go, working perfectly. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.